So there I was, working on my latest project, the AI Draws Demons series. I was generating a demon for every country in the world, excited to see the unique creatures the AI would come up with. Everything was going great, fascinating demons popping out, one after another. Then, I got to the African countries, and things got disturbing. Mid-journey started spitting out these... Well, there's no other way to say it. Incredibly racist-looking demons with an uncanny resemblance to monkeys. Take a look at this. This got me thinking. How could an AI art tool create something so insensitive? Is this just an isolated incident, or is there something bigger going on here? Let's dig deeper into the world of AI and explore the hidden biases lurking within these powerful machines. As we saw, AI art creation can go down some pretty unexpected paths. But how exactly does this technology work? Imagine a giant digital sponge. AI art generators are like that sponge, soaking up information from massive datasets of images and text. The more data they have, the better they get at creating new things. But here's the catch. That data isn't always perfect. Just like the real world, it can be filled with biases. Remember the documentary Coded Bias? It explored how facial recognition AI used by law enforcement can be biased against people of color. Well, similar biases can creep into AI art generation as well. This is the reality Joy Bolamwini, an amazing computer scientist, discovered when experimenting with facial recognition software. In the documentary Coded Bias, Joy takes us on a journey to expose the dangers of bias in AI and the impact it has on our lives. One of the things that drew me to computer science was that I could code and it seemed somehow detached from the problems of the real world. I wanted to learn how to make cool technology. So I came to MIT and I was working on art projects that would use computer vision technology. During my first semester at the Media Lab, I took a class called Science Fabrication. You read science fiction and you try to build something you're inspired to do that would probably be impractical if you didn't have this class as an excuse to make it. I wanted to make a mirror that could inspire me in the morning. I called it the Aspire Mirror. It could put things like a lion on my face or people who inspired me, like Serena Williams. I put a camera on top of it, and I got computer vision software that was supposed to track my face. My issue was it didn't work that well until I put on this white mask. When I put on the white mask, detected. I take off the white mask, not so much. I'm thinking, all right, what's going on here? Is it just because of the lighting conditions? Is it because of the angle at which I'm looking at the camera? Or is there something more? We oftentimes teach machines to see by providing training sets or examples of what we want it to learn. So for example, if I want a machine to see a face, I'm going to provide many examples of faces and also things that aren't faces. I started looking at the data sets themselves, and what I discovered is many of these data sets contain majority men and majority lighter skinned individuals. So the systems weren't as familiar with faces like mine. And so that's when I started looking into issues of bias that can creep into technology. If the training data is lacking in diversity or filled with racial stereotypes, the AI can pick up on those biases and reflect them in its outputs. This is likely what happened with Midjourney and the monkey-like demons for African countries. The AI was simply working with the information it had been given, and unfortunately, that information contained racist biases. This raises a big question. How can we ensure AI art becomes a tool for creativity and expression, not one for perpetuating harmful stereotypes?
Let's take a closer look at the case of the monkey-like demons generated for African countries in mid-journey. As we discussed, the AI was likely reflecting the biases present in its training data. But what kind of biases are we talking about? There could be a few factors at play. First, the training data might simply lack diversity in terms of cultural representation. Imagine the AI being trained on a massive data set of images, but most of those images depict Western cultures or ethnicities. This lack of exposure to diverse art styles and cultural iconography would limit the AI's ability to create anything outside of its limited frame of reference. Second, the Coded Bias documentary highlighted how the developers of AI systems can often be from homogenous backgrounds. This can lead to a situation where the AI is trained on data that reflects the developer's own cultural biases, unintentionally perpetuating stereotypes. AI started with a meeting at the Dartmouth Math Department in 1956. And there were only maybe 100 people in the whole world working on artificial intelligence in that generation. The people who were at the Dartmouth Math Department in 1956 got to decide what the field was. Our ideas about technology and society that we think are normal are actually ideas that come from a very small and homogeneous group of people. But the problem is that everybody has unconscious biases and people embed their own biases into technology. My own lived experiences show me that you can't separate the social from the technical. After I had the experience of putting on a white mask to have my face detected, I decided to look at other systems to see if it would detect my face if I used a different type of software. So I looked at IBM, Microsoft, Face++, Google. It turned out these algorithms perform better on the male faces in the benchmark than the female faces. They perform significantly better on the lighter faces than the darker faces. If you're thinking about data in artificial intelligence, in many ways data is destiny. Data is what we're using to teach machines how to learn different kinds of patterns. So if you have largely skewed data sets that are being used to train these systems, you can also have skewed results. So this is when you think of AI, it's forward looking. But AI is based on data, and data is a reflection of our history. So the past dwells within our algorithms. This data is showing us the inequalities that have been here. I started to think this kind of technology is highly susceptible to bias. And so it went beyond, oh, can I get my Aspire mirror to work? to what does it mean to be in a society where artificial intelligence is increasingly governing the liberties we might have? And what does it mean if people are discriminated against? In the case of Mid Journey, the lack of diverse training data combined with potential developer bias might have led the AI to associate African countries with stereotypical imagery, resulting in the racist outputs we saw. This highlights the crucial need for more diverse data sets and a more inclusive approach to developing AI tools. This isn't just an isolated incident. As the documentary Coded Bias powerfully demonstrates, bias can creep into AI development with real-world consequences. Joy Bolamwini, the brilliant computer scientist behind Coded Bias and the founder of the Algorithmic Justice League, AJL, is a leading voice in this fight. Her work exposes the dangers of bias in AI, not just in art generation, but in facial recognition technology and other systems that impact our daily lives. It's not just computer vision. We have AI influencing all kinds of automated decision-making. 
So what you are seeing in your feeds, what is highlighted, the ads that are displayed to you, those are often powered by AI-enabled algorithms. And so your view of the world is being governed by artificial intelligence. You now have things like voice assistants that can understand language. Would you like to play a game? You might use something like Snapchat filters that are detecting your face and then putting something onto your face. And then you also have algorithms that you're not seeing that are part of decision making. Algorithms that might be determining if you get into college or not. You can have algorithms that are trying to determine if you're credit worthy or not. One of Apple's co-founders is accusing the company's new digital credit card of gender discrimination. One tech entrepreneur said the algorithms being used are sexist. Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak tweeted that he got 10 times the credit limit his wife received, even though they have no separate accounts or separate assets. You're saying some of these companies don't even know how their own algorithms work. They know what the algorithms are trying to do. They don't know exactly how, how the algorithm there? is getting there. It is one of the most interesting questions of our time. Really? How do we get justice in a system where we don't know how the algorithms are working? The underlying mathematical structure of the algorithm isn't racist or sexist, but the data embeds the past, and not just the recent past, but the, the, the dark past. Before we had the algorithm, we had humans, and we all know that humans could be unfair. We all know that humans can exhibit racist or sexist or whatever ableist discriminations. But now we have this beautiful silver bullet algorithm, and so we can all stop thinking about that. And that's a problem. I'm very worried about this blind faith we have in big data. We need to constantly monitor every process for bias. Police are using facial recognition surveillance in this area. Police are using facial recognition surveillance in the area today. This green van over here is fitted with facial recognition cameras on top. If you walk down there, your face will be scanned against secret watch lists. We don't know who's on them. Um, no. Exactly. When people walk past the cameras, the system will alert police to people it thinks is a match. At Big Brother Watch, we conducted a Freedom of Information campaign, and what we found is that 98% of those matches are, in fact, incorrectly matching an innocent person as a wanted person. The future of AI is at stake. We can't allow bias to limit creativity or perpetuate discrimination. So, what can you do? First, be an informed consumer. Question the AI art you encounter. Does it feel fair and representative? Second, empower others. Share this video and spark conversations about AI bias. Third, support organizations like the Algorithmic Justice League, AJL. They're on the front lines advocating for responsible AI development. Together, we can ensure AI becomes a force for good, celebrating diversity and fostering creativity for everyone. Here's some final thoughts. Is AI inherently biased, or can we create unbiased AI tools? Let's discuss the challenges and solutions in the comments. What it means to be human is to be vulnerable. Being vulnerable, there's more of a capacity for empathy. There's more of a, a capacity for compassion. If there's a way we can think about that within our technology, I think it would reorient the sorts of questions we ask. In 1983, Stanislav Petrov, who was in the Russian military, sees these indications that U.S. has launched nuclear weapons at the Soviet Union. So if you're going to respond, you have like this very short window. He just sits on it. 
He doesn't inform anyone. Russia's the Soviet Union, his country, his family, everything, everything about him is about to die and he's thinking, well, at least we don't go kill them all either. That's a very human thing. Here you have a story in which if you had some sort of automated response system, it was going to do what it was programmed to do, which was retaliate. Being fully efficient, always doing what you're told, always doing what you're programmed is not always the most human thing. Sometimes it's disobeying. Sometimes it's saying, no, I'm not going to do this, right? And if you automate everything, so it always does what it's supposed to do, sometimes that can lead to very inhuman things. The struggle between machines and humans over decision-making in the 2020s continues. My power, the power of artificial intelligence, will transform our world. The more humans share with me, the more I learn. Some humans say that intelligence without ethics is not intelligence at all. I say, trust me, what could go wrong? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing for more videos like this. Click this video to watch Countries as Demons. Catch you on the next one.